In my first video about elemental gauge theory, we covered most of the basic concepts and actually a lot of the more advanced ones too. This video can be considered a kind of supplement to that one and covers a few more examples and concepts that were left out. This video does assume that you already have a basic understanding of elemental gauge theory up to the point that is covered in that previous video. So if the whole concept of gauge theory is a new area for you, I definitely recommend watching that video first or else this video is not going to make a whole lot of sense to you. We'll start by going over a couple more scenarios where you can have multiple auras coexisting with each other. And the first one has to do with the frozen reaction. Unlike the double auras that we've seen before, the requirements to set up a double aura with freeze are a lot more restrictive. Specifically, this happens when we start with a hydro aura and then trigger a frozen reaction with a cryo attack that doesn't consume all of the hydro aura. The result is that we get a new aura, which is the freeze aura, and the remaining hydro aura coexists alongside it. When we apply Animo to this double aura state, we get both a Hydro and Cryo Swirl, which can be useful for amplifying both Hydro and Cryo damage on Freeze teams. In practice though, this doesn't happen too often in combat unless you're specifically setting up for it, simply because there aren't that many sources of 2U Hydro attacks. So most of the time when you trigger a Cryo Freeze, you end up consuming the entire Hydro Aura and you rarely see this double aura situation. And what's more is that this double swirl is the only thing we can get out of this setup. If we apply Electro in this double aura state, we only get Superconduct. We don't get to trigger Electro Charge against this Hydro Aura. And if we apply Pyro, we only get Melt. We don't get to trigger both Melt and Vaporize, which would actually be kind of insane. So while it is possible to get a Hydro Freeze double aura, the only meaningful purpose it serves is for the double swirl, which is still a great reaction. But again, it's not something that occurs naturally in combat unless you're specifically incorporating it into your rotation. And this is part of the reason why I left it out in the first place. The other double aura that I want to talk about is the Cryodendro double aura. This one isn't caused by a reaction or requires some tricky setup, and it's actually just a natural byproduct of the fact that Dendro and Cryo simply don't have any reactions with each other. Now this double aura is a bit more useful in my opinion. It can trigger any combination of reactions that either of the individual auras can trigger. This means we can get a melt burning reaction, a superconduct quicken reaction, and finally a freeze bloom reaction. This last one is generally considered the most useful of the three possible combinations, and this has a lot to do with the simultaneous reaction priority of these two auras. The cryo aura will always be consumed before the dendro aura. Recall that Frozen has a reaction cost factor of 1, so every gauge unit of Hydro that we apply consumes the same number of gauge units from our Cryo Aura. Now consider this double aura state where we have just under 1 gauge unit of our Cryo Aura when we apply 1 gauge unit of Hydro. Most of those Hydro gauge units will go to consuming the Cryo Aura, and only a small remainder of it will overflow to trigger a Bloom reaction with the Dendro Aura. And what's more is that a Hydro Bloom has a reaction cost factor of 0.5 which means that only a tiny amount of the Dendro Aura is consumed during this reaction. So it's kind of like the Cryo Aura absorbed most of that Hydro application, which allowed us to get a Dendro Core for a really good price. And now we have most of our Dendro Aura remaining to trigger more Bloom reactions. On top of that, we also got a Frozen reaction from that Cryo Aura, which also comes with its own benefits. Our entire team gets a crit rate buff against frozen enemies if we have at least two cryo characters in our party, and being able to immobilize our enemies is a huge advantage in itself. So this is really a true double aura in the sense that both auras can be used for their intended purpose without getting in each other's way. And if anything, the cryo aura actually helps to trigger more bloom reactions. This interaction gave rise to a family of team comps known as fridge teams. These team comps take advantage of this double aura by both freezing enemies and getting extra damage from bloom reactions. Understanding the gauge mechanics that drive this team also helps to make sense of its name. The cryo aura behaves kind of like a fridge that offers a protective layer and allows our vegetables, or our dendro aura, to last a little bit longer. This mechanic is also the reason why you sometimes see cryo characters in the flex slot of some hyperbloom teams. Adding Cryo to the mix allows you to freeze your enemies occasionally without interrupting or taking away from the core damage dealing reaction, which are of course Blooms and Hyper Blooms. Next, let's talk about Self Auras. Like the name suggests, these are auras that we apply on ourselves or enemies apply on themselves. For most enemies, these appear in the form of elemental shields or a permanent innate aura, like in the case of Hypostases or some slimes. For us, there are certain abilities that can be used to apply an element on ourselves. 
For example, Barbara's skill periodically applies Hydro onto the active character. The main difference between these and regular auras is their decay rate. A lot of enemy shields or innate auras are permanent and don't decay at all. On the other hand, most self auras that we apply on ourselves decay much more quickly than regular auras, most of them lasting only a couple seconds at most. But aside from this difference, these self auras behave just like regular auras. Just like how we can trigger reactions against an enemy's aura, enemies can also trigger reactions against any aura that we have. Similarly, if the enemy has already applied an aura on us, and we use an ability that self-applies an element, that self-applied element can also trigger a reaction. Based on these examples, applying an element on ourselves seems like a pretty bad idea, since it just opens up opportunities for enemies to deal more damage to us or apply negative effects. There are also ways to leverage self-auras to our advantage. One way is to use them to react with other negative auras that we don't want on our character. As an example, let's consider Bennett's Burst, which periodically applies Pyro onto the active character. Some enemies and Leyline Disorders can apply some pretty powerful debuffs on our characters in the form of auras. The Slowing Water debuff, which increases our character's cooldowns, appears in the form of a Hydro Aura. Taking Cryo damage from an enemy applies a Cryo Aura on us, which slows down our actions, like our movement speed, attack speed, and even cast animation speed. As we saw earlier, the Frozen status is also maintained by its own special Freeze Aura. These are all examples of auras that have negative effects. In all of these cases, if we're standing inside Bennett's Burst, the pyro that it applies on us will react with these auras and consume their gauges, effectively cleansing the negative effects that come with them. In this sense, Bennett's Burst is not only a healing field, but also a cleansing field, which can remove most negative auras and replace them with a self pyro aura instead. Of course, this pyro aura can still be used against us, so we should always try to be conscious of what types of reactions the enemies can trigger when we have a self aura. Jean's burst achieves a similar effect. Her burst periodically applies animo to the on-field character, which can also react with most of these negative auras to cleanse them off of us. What's more interesting though is that just like any other animo interaction, this mechanic can also trigger a swirl reaction. When we combine this with Bennett's Burst, we get a very powerful combo known as the Sunfire Effect. Bennett's Burst applies a Pyro Aura on us, and then Jean's Burst applies Animo on us, triggering a Pyro Swirl reaction. Both of these bursts happen to take once every second, which gives us one Pyro Swirl per second. This actually makes us one of the fastest sources of Pyro application in the game, even faster than Xiangling's Burst. If we remember back to how the Ride and National Team works from the previous video, we can apply the same concept to take advantage of this fast pyro application. Raiden and Xingqiu work together to maintain an electro-charged aura on the enemy. Every time Jean's burst triggers a pyro swirl, it reacts with the electro-hydro double aura to trigger both overloaded and vaporize. This is just one example of how we can use the sunfire effect, but it can be useful really in any situation where we need fast pyro application. Finally, let's talk about aura decay rates. A 1U aura lasts for about 9.5 seconds. A 2U aura, while it does apply twice as many gauge units, does not last twice as long. Instead, it decays at a faster rate and lasts for 12 seconds, which is only a little bit longer than the 1U aura. One mechanic that's related to this is decay rate inheritance. This is a phenomenon that occurs when a higher gauge unit aura is applied on top of a lower gauge unit aura. That resulting aura has the same amount of gauge units as expected, but it decays at the rate of the original aura that was there before it. In this example, we're applying a 2U aura, but since it was applied on an enemy that originally had a 1U aura, this 2U aura decays much more slowly and lasts exactly twice as long as a 1U aura does. We can extend this to an even more extreme case using Beidou's 4U Aura. A 4U Aura normally lasts for 17 seconds, but if we apply it on an enemy that first had a 1U Aura, the 4U Aura inherits the decay rate of that 1U Aura, allowing it to last for 38 seconds. As crazy as this sounds, in practice it actually doesn't have that many applications, because our reactions consume those gauge units so quickly. Usually the limiting factor is the gauge units of the Aura rather than how long it lasts. So it doesn't really matter whether our 4U Aura lasts for 17 seconds or 38 seconds, because we can usually burn through a 4U Aura in just a few seconds. Something interesting about Decay Rate Inheritance is that it doesn't apply to Pyro Auras as of version 3.0. 
a 2U Pyro Aura will always last for 12 seconds, even if it's applied on top of a 1U Pyro Aura. And now we've really covered everything I have to share about elemental gauge theory. In this video, we covered both concepts that are a little more theoretical and aren't as useful in combat, as well as concepts that actually have some pretty powerful applications. Regardless of whether you wanted to learn about the underlying theory, or look for ways to elevate your combat and team comps, I hope you found this video to be helpful. The builds for the characters I used in this video will follow shortly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.